Okay. Um, um, all right. Hello, everyone. Do you hear me? Am I like, audible well enough? Um, okay, good. Um, yeah, I would request that uh, if there is any issue, uh, please someone unmute and say something because I'm not I'm not going to be able to see uh, your messages while I'm presenting. Okay. All right. So I'm going to take it slow a little bit in the beginning just to to allow people to join if uh, anyone is uh, like if there are any staggers. All right, so this session is about database schema design, SQL. It's really for relational databases, as opposed to what you had in the morning, which was, which was about uh, NoSQL. Um, so uh, let's start by asking a question. Like, let me ask you guys, like, um, can some, some of you, someone of you define what a schema is, or in this case in particular? In the case of relational databases. Um, why did I Sorry. Uh, okay. Anyone? Okay, Ahmed, go ahead. Okay, hi. Hi. So, I think a schema is like a blueprint mm -hmm. or like a structure of how you want your data to be saved or stored in a database. Okay. Um, good. That's a, that's a good answer. Um, okay. So anyone can tell me that is a difference because you had like this morning session about NoSQL. What is the difference between um, SQL and NoSQL, and especially when it comes to uh, schemas? Anyone like it's a, like if anyone, any one of you wants to like, Share what they think. It's um to be okay. Ahmed again. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, it's like in for SQL, it's a really uh, fixed schema. Like there's a certain design, and then like uh, after a lot of after adding a lot of data, it's really difficult to change the schema, it's, it has costs, I guess. But mm -hmm. for NoSQL, you can make it flexible. Like whatever data comes, it's always uh, much more flexible. Yeah, okay, yes, uh, this is a, a good point. It's basically, so the schema in the relational database is something that you define in the beginning, and that's basically it. Like uh, it's enforced uh, for, it defines just basically your database and and uh, how everything is stored and you don't go back um okay so let's start here um um okay so uh as ahmed just said a schema is a database blueprint the skeletal structure how the data is going to be stored in our database um how the data is organized how the data is like uh, like the relationship among the data inside a database uh, a database schema uh, like can be categorized in two with two kinds like the physical uh, schema and the logical schema so the physical schema is just how physically the data is going to be stored in the like desk or like uh, so in case of um yeah so this is just i'm talking about like files indices and stuff like that how how they like how everything is going to be stored uh what we are more concerned with here is the logical database schema this describes the conceptual model of the database um so defines uh, for us in the relation database uh for the relation database is defined by having tables rows and columns um uh, the logical Schema, uh, local schema is going to define these tables, the fields, which are the columns, and the relationship between different tables, um, and then any other constraints that we will have. Um, 
anything that you want to, to constrain from the start, uh, that is, is all of this is going to be defined in the logical um, database schema. Um, okay, how, how we go about designing this, or what is the mostly, like, what are the fundamentals of designing a database schema for relational databases? It's like the data has to be formatted consistently. Um, and this is like the basic uh, um, uh, requirement is that each every record in, in your tables is going to have a distinct primary key or that uh, like rows are not duplicated. Um, and yeah, so we, we have to make sure that we don't omit, uh, omit any any data. Um, yeah, so guys, if I'm going too quickly or too slowly, please uh, comment. If you don't hear me or there's an issue, also comment uh, um, audibly. So someone just unmute and say something so that I can um, react. Um, well, I can react to that. All right. So here I'm going to take an example just before going through more concepts here. Suppose uh, supposedly that we have like a, this is a, the end result, something that the data that we want uh, to put. Um, okay, have here two tables, two tables in a database. Uh, one is users, one is posts. Like this is, a, think about it, it's like a, a blog or some kind of a social media thing. Uh, so I have uh, users that sign in with their emails and then they add posts. Uh, so you see that here in, in my table, this is a small table. I have like each user has a, or each row has a, like a unique primary key here. It's a unique index. No, it's not going to be repeated. Uh, there are possible repetitions in the other um, columns. Uh, the posts uh, here are also going to have a, a identity, uh, primary primary keys also, uh, IDs basically, it's just numbers, not repeated. But um, because these posts are created by these users, there is a relationship between these two tables defined here by having this like uh, are going to point to the user that posted whatever here by by the user id so this user id is referring to this one uh and you this is what we call uh a foreign key basically so you can see that the foreign key here um the requirement is that we cannot have a key that appears here that doesn't appear here. So, for example, if I have user uh, IDs that go from one to five, I can never have like a user ID that appears in the post that is greater than five, like 10, for example, that means it's wrong. And I can have to create my schema in a way that incorporate all of this. It creates these tables, it creates, um, the constraints, the relationship between these two tables and the constraints on the on the value. Um, and it can look something like this. So here, uh, this is the definition of the, basically the table users. Uh, it's an entity, the user's entity. See, I have like uh, four uh, attributes, the ID, the username, the email, and the time, the the user were created or the user joined um, my platform or app. Uh, another entity is a post um, as it has its own attributes. And here we can see that this user ID is related to the ID here. So um, okay, I, I had different names in the tables for this. This was the user ID and this post ID, but it's okay, the same basically. Um, and this uh, this uh, um, line tells me that this are uh, like this is a foreign key here. Uh, this um, diagram is called the entity relationship diagram, and uh, there are like uh, 
uh, websites that uh, or applications that you can like draw this easily there. I use this one. Um, I think that you have uh, like in the document, the challenge document you have, you have reference to another example of this. You can take a look at that. I'm not going to go through how to use them. Anyway, so when uh, there is a problem. Hi, Tina. Yes. Can, can you hide the sharing, Dante? The sharing. Uh, the... Uh, see this. OK. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Um, okay, thanks. Uh, all right. Um, so, um, okay, I'm going to just go through this. Um, as there are will be some concepts that here I'm not going to explain right now, but I'm just going to mention them. Uh, like uh, these are best practices when it comes to to creating schemas. You have to follow naming standards. Like there are conventions you have to name to name tables and attributes uh, you have to avoid using like uh, reserved uh, SQL um, words uh, keywords and avoid like a, uh, special characters and stuff like that something that will just create errors for you um, when you want to implement it um, there are like uh, there is a balance okay Creating a schema depends very much on, on, on the use case. So what you want. So we're here when we define the entities, when we define the attributes, when we define the um, like constraints, this all depends on what we are working with. So I'm working with a social media uh, platform or something and, and uh, this makes sense for me to have two tables. Uh, of course, I could have like just one table. I can put everything in one table, and I will have some um, like repetitions because I will have like for whenever a user Alice, for example, will create a post. If I put these two tables together, I will have like a line with the username Alice for each post. And that will be like I will have redundancy there with the, uh, with the username and email. Uh, it will be repeated every time. So I chose to to put them in two tables. I could have put in more tables or less tables. So that depends on what I want, like my uh, how I want to use the database. So if uh, my database is going to be, I want to write to the database. It will be easier for me to have. Um, like more tables, more tables means uh, less redundancy and means less space, less storage. Uh, but uh, having more tables means that when I'm going to read from the database, if I want to like do some analysis, I'm going to need to join the tables. And that means the queries, the more tables I have, the more tables I have to join, the more like the query is going to take time. So it depends on how I want to use the database. Uh, how I define this. So this is not like um, there is a not one way to define the, the schema. Um, so this is what is talking about redundancy and what something is called normalization. Um, if I have time, we will we'll talk about this later. Um, this is what I said just now: create the right number of tables uh, depending on the use case. Um, um, like create documentation when you're creating the schema so that like because the schema is a blueprint that uh, like is going to remain there and so like anyone who's going to come and use the, the database um, it's good to have the schema there like um, well documented uh, okay in creating the schema we have to protect the integrity of the data so we have to like use constraints to Make sure that we don't like not um, we don't have the wrong data entered in our database. So, if there is a value that uh, a field that does it take a particular like values, for example, it takes numbers that can be only like positive, or like can only be um, less than ten. I can put a constraint to do that. I can put a constraint that this value cannot be empty. Um, so not null, 
of, of course, I will define the data, the data types, define the foreign keys, um, all of that. This is all, all, all put in my schema. Um, okay, so uh, I'm going to um, just, uh, this is again, I'm, um, we can spend more time on this, but I want to move on to, to the demo. So I'm just showing you like type of schema. Like this is a star schema, like, uh, and the next one is the snowflake schema. So just uh, like uh, this is the same kind of data, but uh, two different schemas that like um, here have much more tables from the same, from the same, um, uh, from the same data. Stated. So, um, okay. Um, I want to go to, sorry, this is disorganized, but um, okay. I'm going to go directly to using databases with Python. Uh, I'm going to be using Postgres, Postgres scroll. Um, so, in uh, Postgres scroll, uh, the relational database management system and um, with an object or oriented approach. So um, can be used with Python uh, <clears throat> and uh, given that you can use like, uh, we need, when you use it with Python, you have, you need uh, like a driver, a, a database driver, uh, this uh, module. And for, if you want to make it even more like uh, object object uh, uh, oriented approach can use uh, uh, SQL Alchemy, which m make it possible for you to define like your databases, that your tables and stuff as like uh, in classes instead of using SQL. Um, uh, so, okay, to work with this practically, this is something that uh, you have to do for this challenge for this week. Um, you, you are not required to work with Postgres for in particular, but um, but um, you have to create a, a relational database. You can use the MySQL or um, um, in addition to um, like um, as just an alternative. Okay, the steps to do this is you have to install Postgres first on your machine. I'm not going to go through the steps there. It's like depend on your uh, operating system. There are references um, in the end for to, to do this. I expect like many of you like already have this installed or, <clears throat> okay. Install it, set up, set up, uh, uh, set it up and then install, uh, uh, I cannot pronounce this, but anyway, this is a driver for post, uh, Postgres. It's just simple, it's a pip install. And it's called Alchemy if you if you want to, especially if we, we're going to use it. So we're going to install this also. And here I'm going to stop the presentation and go to the, um, uh, to like a demo of how to do this. <clears throat> Um, before I start, is there is anyone who have a question? Um, there is any question so far? Okay. Hello. I hope I'm saying this correctly. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I have a question on uh, what you mentioned in previous slide uh, mm -hmm. about uh, store procedure. Uh, mm -hmm. Just you mentioned that it is better to use a store uh, procedure uh, during the access the database uh, rather than uh, I mean that uh, theory. Why? Because uh, this is related more with uh, I think with cloud um, when you are using cloud um, services um, there because they can automate a lot of stuff for you and. Um, um yeah so it is not related to what we're going to do right now so uh. 
yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know much about it. So I don't know a lot about it. So maybe if someone else knows uh, about this, this is meant here. Like, uh, okay. Any other question? Yeah. A question. What was it? Could you repeat his question? Sorry, I didn't hear. Yeah, my question is that uh, on the on the previous slide, uh, uh, uh explain that as a store procedure is uh, better to access database rather than uh, curating. Why? Because we re recommend that, or why? Because it is better. So you're saying querying is better, right? Yeah. I mean that when we access uh, the, the, some uh, content from a database or when we call some content from a database, we use query or restore procedure. So why we select restore procedures and normal query? So I think I will uh, I'll make sure we have a answer that question tomorrow. It has more connection to it. It's better to be fine. Okay. okay. All right. So, uh, uh, okay. Ahmed, do you have a question or do you want to participate in this discussion? Can I try to answer it? I'm not sure, but I'll try. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Stored procedure is like a function, I guess, like in programs. It's like it. Uh, it's uh, it's like a piece of uh, query. Like it, you can have many lines in it, like uh, different queries combined together and so on and then it's uh, presented as just a function. So when our application uses stored procedure, it doesn't have to send all the queries there. The stored procedure, the whole uh, stored procedure is stored in the database itself. So the application only needs to call the oh, stored okay. procedure, not every yeah. line in the stored procedure. Well, it sounds to make, make sense to me, actually, this answer. So, I don't know if it did 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 make sense to you or less for the one because I yeah, I mean, Ahmed, you mean that it is uh, reusable? Yeah, it's reusable. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's uh, like a package for different queries together combined. Okay. Thanks. All right. Uh, Uh, there is also like a comment in the in the uh, from Ezra in the comment about this can easily modify the reduced network traffic. Okay. Um. Yeah. I'm I'm, I'm sorry that I didn't uh, like not the answer at all, but it's, it's good to have other people also answer. So I'm going to go. So I did this. Um, um the steps i said like installed postgres and installed um the two um required modules for for python to interact with postgres well one of them is required uh, sql alchemy is just additional because i want to use also um that data from data frames from his pandas so so the start is uh the first thing we're going to do is to have to create the schema. So this is like uh, the tables I had before, users and posts. So these are like um, SQL, um, um, oh, excuse code. Me. Sorry. Excuse me, um, 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 Tina. Yes. Uh, could you please uh, begin again uh, from with the notebook? I didn't do anything in the notebook yet. Oh, no, so okay. Like, I didn't do anything here. I'm just, right. uh, I just started by defining the schema basically here in a, in a, in an SQL file. So it's a file that ends with dot SQL. Can you actually see, is it clear? Do I have to please the, um, the font maybe somewhere. Anyway, I will, I will, I will assume that it's fine. Um, anyway, so I defined the, the two tables with the attributes here and the, 
the data types. And you can see that I define a primary key, not null. These are conditions. And then uh, you have also, like, in the post, you remember that we have user ID that was a foreign key. So uh, here it defined as reference the user's user ID um, from from this table. So this is a this is a schema here is defined, and I'm going to use um, from um, I'm going to use this file to define this that 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 database with this table, these tables. So I'm going to import uh, uh, the needed modules. I define the connection parameters. So um, so I'm going. To, I'm storing everything locally. But of course, uh, uh, with, post with Postgres, you can have uh, like hosted <coughs> remotely. And uh, once it, when you, you in all the standard installations for of you get uh, the user uh, Postgres and with the pass password Postgres basically. So this is like I'm not hiding it. Um, of course, usually when you have password, you have to hide it and you have to put it maybe in an environment file. But here, that's because this is just universal basically. So um, so this is the definition of the connection parameters to the database. I'm gonna this uh, define. Like, um, like, name my, um, like, so take the social media. I'm gonna just like name it like that. And my file schema SQL is just uh, um, here. So it's, it's uh, <clears throat> the same directory. So, um, <clears throat> And uh, so this code is supposed to create the database for me, we create a connection, and I'm going to automatic commit, so I don't need to like commit the changes that I'm going to make. And uh, this SQL uh, uh, SQL is just going to allow me to use uh, <clears throat> an SQL query to create the database. Um, so. All right, run without issues, and uh, you should be able now to see like the database was created. To check this, I'm going to to um, to connect with Postgres here. Uh, All right, SQL. Now I can like uh, query the Postgres databases right away. <clears throat> and one command to see the databases I have is uh, uh, backslash L. And you see, is it here? Yeah. So the database was created. We can check if it has any tables with uh, DT. These are commands for Postgres. You can see that, yeah, this did not find any relations. So there are no tables yet because I didn't create them. I didn't run my schema yet. Uh, um, OK, um, if any, um, all right. So I'm just going to do this step. So. So I added the database to the my connection parameters. And um, uh, so that I, because now the database is created, it's there. And I'm going to like um, use <coughs> uh, the cruiser execute, execute to, to, uh, to execute the SQL from, from the file, basically this, this one. I'm going to run it from here. And this is supposed to create the tables for me or empty tables, but they should appear now here. So, um, so it didn't work. Something happened. I missed something. Um, uh, 
Ah, sorry, I didn't connect to it. I have to connect to the to the database first because I'm connected to the Postgres. Um, by default, I have to connect to the database by using backslash c. And now I should be able to see like uh, my tables here, posts and users. And if I run any SQL um, query, for example, here, and you see that it's empty, it's an empty table. Um, I didn't add any data yet. Yeah, so this is the first part. Uh, is anyone has a question or should we just move to the next one? No questions, I suppose. It's a very really simple. Uh, okay, for this part, I'm going to, I'm going to, because I'm going to like load data from pandas from pandas uh, data frames because um, probably that's what, what you are working with. Uh, so first I'm going to create the, uh, uh, data frames first because I don't have um, I don't have the data. So I'm going to just like have some sample data, some like some username, some emails and times or the time is, I'm, I'm just using time now, all of them. And the post also, just yes, some, uh, uh, just a sample. And you see, like, these are like the databases, the, sorry, the tables that I, that I want to in install in my database. And uh, <coughs> so, <coughs> sorry. So create engine is, this is uh, like the, SQL Alchemy a function that I needed SQL Alchemy for, and it allows me to <clears throat> to directly uh, go from a data frame to uh, to SQL. So uh, if this run runs, I should be oh, okay. Of course, it didn't. Um, okay, let me see. I made a mistake, so. What did I call it? Um, I guess I misnamed uh, so that is a uh, underscore. Mm -hmm. <sighs> What's the connection parameters for me? database called sorry all right um, all right anyway um I get the number. Okay. okay, let's see if I have if I loaded the data correctly now. Yeah. So you see the table now is filled with data. Uh, so this concludes like how to do like create like a schema and connect with Postgres, create the database and upload like the data to the database. Um, any question in this part? It's is it super clear, super simple? Everyone is going to be able to. Well, everyone is going to be able to do this. Hmm. 
Can you hear me, guys? <laughs> okay. I'm going to assume, yes, I'm going to assume that everything is fine, everything is clear. Uh, all right, Abraham? Hey, guys, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, so uh, I didn't get the part uh, where you load the data from the, uh, uh, where, where you load the data. Yeah, from, yeah, so it's F SQL Alchemy. Uh, I'm, it's like this one. And see here. Um, this one. This is, a, this is a, what I want. What I need is this create engine function. Uh, it allows me to do like, it defines the engine here with create engine with the connection parameters. Like you have to use this particular like string format. And um, yeah, and then with from pandas, this is a data frame. Pandas have this two SQL that uses here. The connection is uses, uses this engine. So you, you need the SQL alchemy to do this. SQL alchemy, yeah. Is there any other way of doing this other than this? Uh, Without using SQL alchemy? Uh, we, uh, of course, the, the, there is a, um, you, can in, you can basically insert the data using just uh, SQL uh, queries. So you can see that we use, when we created the database, we didn't do, we didn't use SQL alchemy. We use it, we like basically, um, sorry. So here, we use execute, cruiser execute, so execute here. So we have um, um, like, uh, basically this is a SQL query. We can also have SQL queries in a file and run them. The point is, if you have your data in a data frame already, it's more convenient to do this, um, like in in a one in one line, basically, or in a couple of lines, and instead of like going through a loop, or um, as far as I know, maybe there is a better way. If someone has another, like, knows of another way to do this, please go ahead and and like uh, uh, tell us. Um, but, but as far as I know, it's just other, other ways to use uh, SQL queries and you're going to need a loop or something to go through like the whole um, instant in the data. Thank Maybe. you. Okay, any other question? Okay, Abdurrahman. Uh, hello. Hello. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, I'm very... Yeah, I'm confused. Sorry. Uh, okay. I'm a beginner. I don't know what is that frame. Uh, All right. And and I don't know how to make a schema in Visual Studio. And what about this code? How I write it? Okay. Any oh. hints? Uh, it's fine. Uh, okay. It's fine, Abdurrahman. It's fine to be a beginner. I was in your shoes like one year ago. Can see like this. Uh, this um, tutorial is a bit uh, on the like uh, simpler side, but it's uh, in all the code I, I showed you. I'm going to share, so you will have it, and you can just like uh, basically, if you want. So you don't need visual code for visual studio for this. If you don't have it, I'm just using the studio studios. It's better to like it's very convenient, but um, you can work with whatever you have. That we're using right now okay. so yeah so this is just uh this file that defines the schema you can like um like what you need so so this is a query how it looks like the sql query and uh, here you have like uh, uh sorry you asked a question i wanted to answer to oh what is the data frame you asked about the data, the data frame, but I'm going to, yes. So these are just like, you can basically modify this file to what you want. So yeah, the, the, the name of the table goes here. The, um, the fields, the columns goes here, go, go here. And then you, ha you have the, the data types and you have only limited numbers of like 
data types in 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 like um, like you have uh, in here you have is uh, string timestamp like there are not many you have text it's not called string it's called text or like the var var ca character which is like a um, um, a limited number of characters like uh, anyway and then you have these constraints where are like a primary key not null it's and then references to for the foreign key so these are just um, um, here again basically you can also modify this code just to match what you want to do so just change wherever like uh, the the, dat uh, the name of the database the names of um uh like um what else and then you can include the data frame you have so the data frame is uh a data frame is just a data type in python in pandas uh, module in python for um it's very it's very much used in um uh, eda so um analysis of of exploratory analysis that analysis you have an example in the like this is the, this is the repo you had so this is, i'm working on like exactly on what you're working guys so here in the notebooks um you had a function that created a data a data frame from uh, like the data you had like the json data you had this slack parser parser sorry here this function basically returned uh sorry there is i'm sorry this is the code i was actually playing with a little bit so so here this was a data a data frame uh the data frame is just like yeah this one this thing i'm sorry if i'm saying uh i don't know if you are following me abdurrahman but uh, you can ask more specific questions about the things that you don't get or where to start on Slack. Maybe it will be easier to, to answer to you specifically there. Um, um, where was it? Yeah. So this is a data frame. It looks like I created it and just a table, basically. So this was a data frame. It's a nice looking table. <laughs> um and then with pandas this module in python you can do so many things with this data with this data type this um uh, uh these data frames basically anyway um do you have any que other a specific question you want to we can answer now other one please thank here? you for now I, uh, for now, I, ha I haven't uh, uh, any questions. Thank okay. you. Yeah, it's okay. Um, yeah. So, again, if you feel lost and that you, you don't know where to start, please um, ask and also uh, consider asking your colleagues. Consider also people who already like moved ahead. Consider helping your, your colleagues. This is a collaborative effort um uh, it's uh for me what helped me in the week week zero one year ago sorry i'm going to just uh, reminisce a little bit uh week zero i was also lost i don't remember by the day three or four i was still not able to like do the finished task one or something and then um, i in a group of uh, uh we decided to work in a group this is this is very encouraged uh, like we we talked ex extensively and we we discussed like uh, what we every one of us understand about the challenge um so that, that helped a lot so i expect it might help you also uh Belet, so sorry go ahead okay so and uh, here my question is uh, uh when we use it uh, on the first one when we use uh, to or create or add uh, in database we use a a cursor is that not uh yes so. yeah and the second one uh, we use a library python library uh That's yeah so, really so, so, 
Yes. So, um, yeah. SQL uh, Kimi. Yes. Is that yes. the second one is used to create uh, a database or used to manipulate on a database or used to access uh, only? Uh, I use it to only access, but in principle, you can also use it to create the schema itself. So SQL Alchemy, you can actually define the tables. So the tables here, I had them defined in in this file, SQL file with SQL queries here. But with SQL Alchemy, uh, you can define the tables as a, in a class, basically. So it's like an object-oriented approach mm -hmm. to to defining the the, the schema. But uh, I I thought that was too complicated, or maybe it's another approach. Um, so I went with this. I only use SQL Alchemy to um, interact with with data frames. So. And in my case, I only wanted data frames to just insert the data. Um, so we can. You can also can. you can also get mm -hmm. from do the opposite from the database. Get uh, you want to see your data data frames. You can also use uh, like uh, um, can also use SQL Alchemy to as a mediator to do this. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, was there another question? All right, so there is a question here. So we need to mirror the designated designed schemas to have the data frame object. Um, for reason, SQL Alchemy. Um, can you, I, I'm not sure I understand correctly this. Do you mean that uh, the the data frames should have the same structure as the, the as the tables that I defined. That's your point. Okay. Yes. So yeah, exactly. Yes, yeah, they have to be the same. Otherwise, this will will result in an error. If I had, um, if the data frames didn't have the same um, structure, the same number of fields, columns. Uh, the data types, I will get an error actually here. When, when, sorry, when I did this, I can actually, I can add like, um, specify the data types. So another thing is that you can also here, um, this is another point. If exists uh, this um, um, option here, um, Basically, it it can take out the option. I said append, so means that the tables already exist. I can add data to it, but it could be replaced. Yeah, replace, and in that case, it can create a new table for me if it didn't have. If it well, actually, in in any case, it can create a new table for me if it didn't exist. But here, you specify the name of the table here. If it didn't exist, it's going to create it for you. If it exists, it has to match um, everything there. So you don't get, otherwise you get an error. This is the whole point of that. You, you're you keeping a consistency. This is the whole point of having uh, like uh, in the relation databases. Um, you can mess up with, with this stuff, like the basic stuff, yeah. Uh, Okay, so um, uh, I wanted to to explain uh, like normalization and stuff um, like uh, this concept to you also, but uh, I think there is not enough time to go through that. Um, so if, if there is more questions, uh, go ahead. Otherwise we can end it here, I think. I think it's better to have it uh, shorter than to have it like shorter than go longer <laughs> than the time was allotted. Um, I will. I will share the resources. Don't worry. Um, yes, Ahmed. Go ahead. Hi. Hi. Uh, at the beginning of your presentation, you said something about normalization. Yeah. Is that something? Yeah, so uh, this is a concept in 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 
I thought yeah, I wanted to skip it, but okay, I can I can go through it uh, quickly. So uh, okay, normalization is just like a technique in in database design. Um, I'm, I'm trying to. Sorry. Um, it takes time. Uh, all right. So it divides the tables into smaller tables. This is what normalization is. Like the, the goal is to reduce the redundancy, meaning that you don't want to be repeated values. Let me see. Let me try to explain it with an example I had here. So as I said, like um, maybe this uh, maybe it's going to be hard to explain this quickly. Uh, so this is a database of uh, like book book sales. So you have a table that has like uh, sale ID, books, and the store ID quantity, but then they have information about the store, information about the time. So the time is like day, month, and year. And then each book has like information on it. These are four tables. It's called a start schema because it looks like a star. You have a fact table here, and then you have dimensions, dimension tables. The dimension tables don't change much. The book sales, because in sales every day, this table is going to change every day. But this, the store, information about the store is not going to change every day. At the time, is like just, um, uh, it's time idea. I don't actually understand what this table is about. But anyway, the book also, the book is, is go, table is going to be updated when, whenever you add a new book to the store, but it's not going to be at the same frequency as the sales. Anyway, but there are still redundancies in this um, schema. Mainly, look here, the, the store. Every store is has an address that's unique. Has a, is, the address has a city, a state, and a country, but each city, Whenever a city is mentioned, suppose we have a, like a multiple stores on the same in the same city. Whenever a city is mentioned, it has the same state and the same country. You just repeat again. It's in Washington, in oh, sorry, Washington is okay. New York, New York, United States. Whenever you mention this, for every store in the same city, you're going to have the, this repeated. So you can reduce the redundancy more by just going like putting a city ID and for city ID, you have the state ID, the state is defined here and the country is defined here. So there are three tables instead of one, uh, sorry, you, had, you added more, three tables more. Reducing the redundancy because the city is going to be mentioned once here, the state is mentioned once and the country is mentioned once. Not, not, nothing is repeated. Only the IDs and the IDs are take uh, like a smaller, uh, space here you are going you are reducing the space of a storage increasing the number of tables but reducing the storage the point is i'm sorry if i'm going quickly i hope you are going or you are following what i'm saying the point is if you don't want to do any analysis from this uh, database you're going to for example you want to like uh, analyze analyze like the average um uh sales in a particular year for a particular country you have to join these tables all of these ones like i don't know how many are these nine so many the query is going to take so much time uh so you reduce the space but increase the time so if for you depending on your use if you're going to use a database only to store things you're not going to use as much analysis so that's fine to use like such. This is normalization. This is what happened here is normalization. These are normalized. Once there is no redundancy at all, it's normalized. There are levels of normalization actually, but um, I, it's like this is like even more like uh, one form, two forms, uh, like the levels of reducing the redundancy and the interdependencies between columns. But this is like an extra thing. Uh, but yeah, this is a basic idea. Reducing the redundancy, reducing the space, and increasing the integrity of the data. But uh, it comes with a price. Okay, um, thanks. Did you like? Uh, it was it good? Was good enough? All right. Um, 
all right um you can ask about it maybe uh later in slack or something because i think we are running out of time uh, we are going to sh i'm going to share the code uh yeah you can use it as a starter um i'm going to share the slides and the, the codes don't worry um uh okay what about the ski i don't understand the question hussein uh sorry there another question maybe before uh so which data you use uh so this is uh you for the relation database for the challenge what you are going to use is um the like the data is the, the one is, is you are going to use for the machine learning models um as far as i understand so um you're going to extract it from the data you have like you have raw data in json and then you're going to extract data from it and put it in a relation database to uh, to use it for machine learning i hope i'm not wrong if it's wrong someone correct me please uh, okay um All right, um, okay, good. Uh, I think, uh, um, any more questions, please ask on Slack, tag me, Imtinan. Um, if you have a particular question about this, I'm going to, the data is go, the resource is going to be shared, so don't worry. Um, so I think you should end here and stop presenting. um no all right brehan go ahead okay uh, hello everyone hello. so my question is like we try to design the all the database schemas and then the relationships right that's that's yeah. the thing what you have to do so uh, what, what my question is like, there are a lot of datas which are not necessarily for our model or for our analysis. So yeah. are, we, are we required to design uh, those uh, schemas to include all the datas when there is new data comes to uh, into the, our scenario, our to the database, or should we just design a database schema which is going to take all the which is going to save only the necessary uh, fields or let's say fields or the tables which are related to our analysis and model and uh, things like that or should we include everything okay so the answer is that you don't need to include any data you're not going to use that's mm. uh, like the whole point is that you only the data you're sure that you're going to use mm. you include that you don't have to include the other things it's the whole point of um, you were talking about saving space and stuff the oh your moods your sound is moods can you hear me Hello? Am I audible? Uh, we are hearing you. Yeah, you're audible. MT9 okay, is not I audible. I think she's out. Is that a connection or what's it? Yeah, looks like so. I'm not sure, but she was not audible. I think her mic or something. It's not clear. Maybe you can answer on Slack. Just you can ask her on the Slack. Um, okay, if that's the case, thank you. We have to stop here. Bye. Uh, 
ask a question on the Slack. Thank you. Bye.